Hey guys and welcome to Nickrit. In today's video we're going to go over how to make the Luna Squish Bunny. So this is a version of the Luna Squish base body that I worked on in my last video. So if you haven't seen that you will need to see that video in order to do this pattern. Um, it'll be linked down below and in this tutorial we're going to show you how to make the ears how I embroider the face, which I'm gonna do on this cream bunny, just to show the like difference between the dark embroidery and the cream uh, bunny's yarn. And I'm gonna show you how to make the tail, this little cute fuzzy tail. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, stay tuned. I'm also going to link a um, little coupon code for the first month that this video is out. I'm gonna be posting a coupon code to get the printable PDF pattern on Ravelry for free. So stay for uh, stay tuned to the end of the video for that. And uh, let's get started. All right, so for this project, you will need some worsted weight yarn. I am using some Karen Simply Soft. I believe these are actually mill ends. So, you know, it might look a little bit wonkier than the typical Karen Simply Soft, but this is a worsted weight or size four uh, yarn. I am using some crochet hooks that are in a D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook size. This is a Susan Bates. I am also going to be using these cute little scissors for cutting all my tails, a darning needle, and I'm going to be using some fluff. If you have a pound bag of this, it'll be more than enough to make this. And you will also need some 20 millimeter eyes or buttons or Whatever else you want to use for the eyes, if you just want to embroider them, I've seen people do that too. I'm using 20 millimeters that I bought in bulk on Amazon. I'll link that down below. And we're going to start off with our base Luna body. This has already been made, so if you've not seen this tutorial, it will be linked down below. I am using this yarn and just doing a baseline of the pink. I'm not changing any colors. I'm doing the exact same pattern that I did in my last video. So we're starting out with this as our base. And if you have not already made this, go ahead and pop over to that other video and make your base. For whatever color you want your bunny to be, I'm doing mine in pink. Oh, and you will also need for the tail. The tail, I am using a little, it's hard to describe, but they're like, it's a pet brush. I got this at the Dollar Tree and it's like this little wiry brush, which I'm using to scrape over the yarn on the tail, which makes it fluffy and all jaggedy. Um, that's pretty much just, it, it kind of unfelts it, if it makes any sense. I saw this in the pet section at the Dollar Tree and this works perfectly. I use it for all of my yarning adventures. All right, so let's start out with the ear. The ear is super easy. I'm going to be making two. This is why I have one here. I'm gonna show you how I do the base of the ear for the second one, but it's, Basically, you increase to 24 and then you go around for 25 rounds. Super easy, not hard at all. And then I show you uh, after all that how I fold it over and I sew it. So let's show you first how I start my ear. If you are comfortable with making things in the ring, this will make perfect sense to you. I'm going to make a slip knot. Make a slip knot. There you go. I'm going to put that on my hook. And I'm going to chain two, which is my magic ring. One, two. And then I'm going to place into my first chain that I made, skipping the second one that I just created. I'm going to place six single crochet inside. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Pull the tail. Pull your yarn out a little bit more so you have some more to work with. Move those out of the way because it's annoying me. There we go. We're going to take one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six stitches. We're going to want to double those from six to 12. So the way that we're going to do that, cars are driving around. We're going to put two in every single one of these stitches and increase every single one of them. I just put one inside that stitch, I went back into it, and we're going to put another stitch inside. So we're going to do one, two, all the way around. One, two, one, two, pull more yarn. My cat got me last night. 
one, two, I believe we have one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, we have one more increase, so one, two, we now have 12 stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And what I like to do here is I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to kind of hold it, put my hook back inside the very last stitch that I just went into, and I'm going to pull my tail through and have that be my stitch marker. I'm going to move my stitch marker every single round just so I can keep track of my rounds. It makes it a little bit easier. So the next we're going to do is we're going to go from 12 stitches to 18. We're essentially uh, adding six stitches every single round, which means that you're just kind of adding an extra space between each increase every time you go around, if that makes sense. So we're going to single crochet one and then increase. So the next one we go two inside. Two. One. Two, one, two, one, two, and one, two, increase that one basically, and one, and this is the last one because our marker is right underneath it. Two. We're gonna take our tail and move it. We now have 18 stitches and we're gonna go from 18 to 24 and this will be our last increase round. So this, because we have already created one more stitch in between our next, we're going to single crochet two and then increase. So one, two, increase three, don't, you don't increase three, but you increase on the third, if that makes sense. Sorry, I realized that could be sounding confusing. One, two, three, and then you increase that same stitch. There we go, that makes probably a bit more sense. One, two, three, and then increase. One, two, three, and then increase one some polyfill got in Eek. one two three and increase one two three this is our last increase right there so here i like to Take my tail, I'm gonna move it again, move my marker. And from here, I'm going to just single crochet around for 25 rounds, maintaining the 24 stitches every single stitch. So I'm just gonna keep going around and around and around until I get to 25 rounds down. I'll be right back once that's done. All right, so now that I've gone around 25 times, I'm going to slip stitch off. Probably should have had that already on there. There we go. Gonna just go into my next stitch, pull, and then go through both. Going to do a little quick little chain like so. And I'm going to make a decently long tail. I need this for both sewing the bottom and for sewing it onto the head. I'm gonna pull my tail through actually going to cut my tail up here just to get rid of it because I don't like dragging tails if I can help it. I cut as I go and I make them so that they are hidden as I go. That way I don't have to deal with it all at the very, very end if I can help it. I'm going to get my darning needle out and I'm going to take my ear and I'm going to fold it in half on the bottom. Try to make it so that all of the stitches are kind of up. I'm going to go with my darning needle through the front, like so. And then I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm gonna go through these stitches, excuse me. The four that are across from each other, 
like so. I just want like dead straight ahead and the four that line up to each other, like so. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna go to this stitch and I'm gonna go across just like I did earlier. I'm just gonna go back and forth and do the same thing, lining it up with whatever is across from one another. Then go there. And then I go here, and this is gonna be kind of wonky because these two are kind of curving the bend here. I'm gonna go through, there we go. Like so, and then I go through these back two, and I try to bring it all together. That way it's not weird and wonky looking. And then I go back, and I go through the same stitches that I went through before on my way back to the beginning. I'm just gonna go all the way back to the top. And if you wanted to, you could just leave it where it's right there. But I like having it just be slightly, I'm not trying to pull that yarn so that it'll break. So you could just leave it like that where it doesn't have a little bit of a, it's just there. But instead, I like to kind of have it go up a little bit more, like just ever so slightly. Think it looks better image wise and the entire time i'm doing this i'm kind of like making the ears look a little bit longer and pulling on them and all that i'm going to go through the backs of the front stitches right along here just for the top like two rows i'm going to do that and i'm going to go back down those same two stitches until i get back to this stitch until i can get it comfortably coming out just the front and then i kind of pull it all not too, too tight, that way my stitches are still there. But I'm going to take my ears now and I'm going to place it right along the final increase round of my head. I like to put it on the side of the head. I can actually take a darning needle. Do I have a spare darning needle? I do. I'm gonna take him and actually stab it into the side of the head to make it a little bit easier so I don't have to like hold on to it too, too much. I'm going to take my head and I'm gonna go into this stitch right here, which is right along the final increase round from our head. And we're going to pull that going that way. And then we're going to take our darning needle and go from the bottom into the top of the stitch of only one side, kind of like so and pull it and then I like to pull it nice and tight. Then I'm going to go to the next stitch from the front of the face to back and keep going from bottom up like so. I'm going to keep going until it is how I want it. So I keep tugging that way it looks a little bit more hidden and that's right around where I want my ears. So I'm going to sew the rest of that on. I actually We'll move this afterwards and then take my and go my darning needle re around the other side and just keep sewing along the bottom. That way it is all together and I don't have to worry about it coming off. So I'm gonna go into the next one. I just wanna show what it looks like to go along the bottom. I'm gonna go along the rest of the top pretty quickly. Trying not to have my hand block it too, too much. Okay. Going around the corner here. So now we're going to just put our ear going this way now. This is where it gets a little bit easier. So this is the very back. We're going to put our darning needle through the center stitch. And then we're going to kind of go from the back towards the my stuffing. I'm gonna have to cut that off. Eek. Hey, well, stuff happens, man. I'll finish sewing and then I'll fix that. And then I'm gonna go into from the top down. I always go through the top of the stitch down. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I get back to the very beginning. I'm gonna do this for both ears. I'm gonna sew them both onto the head. 
Um, and then next we're going to do my tails too short. I made it just slightly too short. And next we're going to go on to um, the tail. So I'll be right back as soon as I get both ears on so I can show you how I do the uh, stitches for the tail and how I actually use this in order to make it fluffy. Be right back. Oh, and when I get to the very end of my last stitch, I like to just take my darning needle and stab it through the rest of the head. Very, you know, violently. Not really, though. But I just hide my tail as far out as I can get it. All right, next up, tail. All right, so we finished with sewing on the ears, and now we're going to work on making the tail. So the tail is slightly different than the rest of the body. It is very similar to how I do the legs on the squish body. So we are going to be making um, five single crochet inside of a ring. So we're going to do our two stitches here, and instead of putting six stitches inside this ring, we're going to put five. So only five this time. One, two, three, four, and five. If I can wrap it, there you go. I'm gonna close my magic ring up. And now I'm going to increase every single one of these stitches to 10. And then I'm gonna increase to 15 by single crocheting one and increasing. So first I'm going to do just the increasing from five to 10. So I like to count this way. Where I go one, two, go to the next one, three, go back the same stitch, four, next stitch, five, and same stitch, six. So we're halfway through, seven, and eight. And then the final stitch of increase, nine, and 10. I like to take my tail as my marker. I'm gonna pull that through and I'm going to take my stitches and do one single crochet increase all the way around there. So we're gonna go from 10 stitches on our third row up to 15. So one, really? <laughs> I just lost my stitch, there we go. Back in, increase, one, and increase, one, and increase. We're over halfway through, one, and increase. And one, and increase. This is our last increase. And from here, we're going to go around for three rounds. And then I'm actually going to go back from 15 down to 10 stitches in order to kind of make the, the roundness and taperedness that it has on the base of the tail. So I'm gonna go around for three rounds and I'll be right back and I'll show you how I do my decreases to make it look like that. And then I'll show you how I use this in order to fray up the tail. Be right back. All right, so I've gone around three times and now I'm back at the beginning again. I'm going to do some decreasing. I'm gonna go from one, I'm gonna be going from 15 down to 10 stitches. So I single crochet one and then I go inside each stitch like so, like I've shown in my Luna Squish video. And I'm going to pull that through, just like so. And that decreases one. We're gonna decrease again, two. Single crochet one and decrease three. Single crochet one, decrease four. And then one again, we're going to Instead of decrease, this very last decrease, we're going to skip and slip stitch into our very last stitch here. We're gonna kind of slip right in, do our chain, just like we did with our ears, and I'm going to create a nice long tail. I'd much rather leave a longer tail and cut off a little bit of excess than not have a long enough tail and just not have enough to sew on. 
I'm gonna pull that through. I'm gonna take my tail like so. I'm gonna actually take my hook and go through that stitch and pull it into the work itself. That way I can kind of just take my tail and hide it. I use it as a way of stuffing essentially. And now I'm going to stuff. I need to find my stuffing. There we go. I have some, I'm not gonna eat that much. I'm gonna take my stuffing. I like to ball it up. And then I'm going to go boonk. This one looks smaller than that one, but I don't know why. I think it's just because the Heartland somehow makes the amigurumi look bigger because the, the yarn itself is just ever so slightly bigger. So the yarn that you choose can actually dramatically affect um, basically what your amigurumi looks like. And I'm going to sew this onto the base of my bunny butt, for lack of better terminology. We're gonna take her, and I think I'm gonna do it this way, where I've got polyfill everywhere. There we go. I'm gonna plop her where I want her. I'm gonna take this darning needle and I'm going to kind of wiggle it into the center, that way it won't move around too, too much while I'm sewing. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, where I go through the body and then I go through the top of the stitch down and go towards the body that I'm working at. I'm gonna go through here. I kind of just eyeball it when it comes to the tail. There's no real good way for me. I go across for a couple rows and then, you know, just generally sewing this on. So I'll be right back as soon as this is sewn on and I will show you how I use this to fluff it up. Be right back. All right, so, ah, no. things are flying. All right, so I'm gonna take my tail and I'm going to shove it in through the rest of the body to hide it. Like so. Take my skeezers, chop it up, and now, my bunny tail is on here, but I like to give it a little bit of extra fluffiness to it. And the way that I do that is I literally just take this and I drag it around this entire thing for a long time. This takes a while and I'm also trying to hold it so that it doesn't like get really wobbly and weird the entire time. If you find that your tail is getting a little bit too like elongated, like so, try holding it while you're doing that and also maybe try going around twice with your um tail the way that i did with the neck on the squish and that might help alleviate that problem so i'm just gonna keep going around for as much as i can until i get it to the size and general appearance that i want i'm gonna keep going until it's what i want it all right, next up, I'm gonna show how to do the face. I'm going to embroider the face, not on pink here, but on the white bunny that I have here, just so that the dark yarn that I use for embroidery will show up a little bit better. And also his butt is actually done. So this is what it's gonna look like once that is all said and done. I also like to do this because it makes it look like all fluffy. And it's hard to get to the base a little bit. So if you can't do that, I usually just kind of focus here as much as I can and let it kind of like fade into the base a little bit, if that makes sense. I'll be right back when I finish with him and I'll show you how I embroider his little eyebrows and nose. Be right back. All right, so my fiance actually stole the other pink one so that he could do the bunny bottom because he just finds that to be fun. <laughs> it gets aggression out or whatever. So I'm gonna do the eyes real quick and I'll show you how I do that. I'm using Heartland, which is a size four, just a worsted weight. I just like the color uh, variation on this one. It's got like a little pretty heathering to it. So I have a darning needle that I have doubled over. It is probably about this, I, I make an obscenely long tail. It's really long, just this, this is it doubled over and it's still like really long. So I would rather make it again, too long than not too long. I do this all in one fluid move. 
if that makes sense. This will be interesting to see how it looks against this yarn. I'm going to stick my needle in through the base here to wherever I want my eyebrow to pop up. I'm wanting it to pop up there. There we go. And I'm going to let it go all the way through till about there. Okay, I will cut that afterwards. And I'm going to now put my eyebrow till about there ish and I'm going to have my needle pointing towards where I want the nose to start so I'm gonna go a little bit over there we go I want the right part of the nose to be there so I'm going to not do that there we go I'm trying to make it so that the needle only goes through these points so we're going to do ah, as I hit my thing pull that through Make sure that it is tight. There we go. So he's got a little concerned eyebrow there. We are now going to go across. Like so. However long you want your nose to be. I'm going to go back to where I came out of originally. Like so. Make sure I don't double wind it or anything like that. We're going to very gently pull on it like so. We're going to go over again, but this time come up through the center because that's where the middle of the nose is going to be coming out of. I'm happy with that. Nice chubby nose. And we're going to go down to whatever length we want our nose to go down to. So I'm going to go here, I think that's a good length, and I'm going to take my darning needle and point it up towards where I want my eyebrow to start over here, so I'm going to do that there. So wherever I want my eyebrow to go, I'm going to go that way, not get it caught up on the arm, make sure that these go straight. I can kind of pull and tug as it closes. So that nose is done. And now I didn't go high enough, so I'm going to go back in slightly like so. Go a little bit higher. Make sure that it's kind of inside there. And now I'm going to finish off by putting it in the same distance, so this is this far apart. I'm going to do the same thing here, where I then go in and just hide the tail at this point. So I'm going to pull it as far out as I can. I am actually not super happy with that, so I'm going to actually cut my tail here pull this out because I'm not pleased with how that came out. I'm going to put this back on my darning needle. Fix where I just pulled a little bit. It's way too thick of a brow, I think. I think that's where I want it. Let's try that again. It's hard to do these dark brows on such a light bunny. There we go. That look about, yeah, it's about right. There we go. If you got to pull it out, you got to pull it out. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. So now I'm going to cut these tails and this bunny apparently is competitive with the other one. They're everywhere. This bunny is done with this cute little face and his bunny little tail has already been done. And if you want a bigger tail, then you can go... Uh, bigger on your increases. It, it doesn't super duper matter. It matters on what you want for your little guy. I like to squish it in there so that it goes back inside. We're gonna cut not too, too close. There we go. And do the squish trick again. And get rid of that little black fluff. And there we go. I completely forgot. So his face is done. This is future Cody probably editing this poorly, but I wanted to show how I do blush on these. A lot of people will use fabric paints and things like that 
but I actually use old blush. This is actually from the Dollar Tree, I think, and then a brush that I got in one of my beauty boxes. So I start out light where I kind of shake it off after going around in it. And then I start in the dead center. I like to put a little bit of blush in the center. And I start out going in just circles. And then I go outward until it's where I want it to be. I'd rather start off small and have to add more than add way too much. And then all of a sudden I can't do anything about it. So I'm gonna let it slowly creep up over here a little bit. I think that this looks really cute and I love how it looks on the lighter bunnies because the blush doesn't show up on the gray as well. And I know that you can use like fabric paints and stuff, but I think that this looks really nice and it's subtle. And that's what I'm gonna do for that ear. You can also take a little bit and put it along here just slightly and just keep going just till it is the size that you want it essentially. I like to go slightly under the eyeball with this. I think that it looks really cute. It's probably driving people crazy that I went with the right one instead of the left one in order. I should have gone from left to right completely, but don't go in the blush, you little foot. I'll try to make it as even as I can for the cheeks. That needs to get blow blown out a little bit. And that's pretty much good for the eyes. We're gonna do the second ear now. I like to grab there and I start by going in the like crevice. This sounds bad, but still. And this is just Dollar Tree blush that I have that works really well. I don't know why it does, but I got it over the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna blow it out a little bit more so it's I like to just do this as a finishing touch for all of my amigurumis that are that I think would look good with blush on them. I do it with my Novas a lot, the the little girl amigurumis that I do, and the baby Novas. All right, so that's pretty much how I add blush to all of my amigurumis. Most people use fabric paint, but I like using actual blush blush. I'm sure that there's a reason people use fabric paint. I just don't usually do that. So that's pretty much all there is to this tutorial. I'm pretty happy with how his little face turned out. Like that looks super cute. I always do a double on here and adding little embroidery pieces always kind of adds a lot more character to your amigurumi. Adding blush adds some character too. I'm gonna see, actually out of, as an experiment, will the blush show up on this gray one? I've never actually tried, so maybe Oh, actually, it kind of does. I think I might add blush. I might have to add a lot more blush to the gray one, but I might have to go a little bit heavier in my how heavy-handed I go with it. Yeah, that actually looks really cute. Oh, that looks really cute. All right, I was talking a whole load of smack earlier, and I was wrong, so it's a little bit of... You always gotta just experiment. Worst comes to worst, you just make another one. And whatever you made just doesn't look the most amazing. That looks great. I'm actually pretty excited with how that looks. Does it look great on the face too? I'm experimenting on camera. That actually isn't bad. That's not bad at all. I don't think. I think it looks great. I wonder if it'll look good on camera and on video and all that. Kind of just blob it around, try to make it as even as I can. I'm doing that off camera, oops. All right, so that's pretty much how you add blush to your amigurumi, and apparently you can do it to all of them. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. If you like stuff like this, let me know by hitting like and subscribing to my channel. We just hit over 24,000 people who are subscribed to my channel, which I think is absolutely insane. I am 
so pumped for having that many people watching my videos. It's kind of actually unnerving and freaks me out a little bit, but I'm trying not to think about it too, too hard. I don't know. It freaks me out, but I also really love the fact that there's like this awesome little community around crocheting that likes watching how to do things like this. So, and can take the fact that I blabber in most of my videos and I just rant. So that's kind of nice. Um, in my future video, so the one that's coming up after this, I'm going to actually have this cute little unicorn. I should actually add a little bit of blush to her too. Could do some on the inside of her ear and all that stuff. I'd have to get a little bit of a finer, I think, brush than that. But that looks really cute on her too. But yeah. Oh, that looks super cute. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter because her coloring's a little bit lighter. That looks super cute. So we're gonna be doing this video um, on the unicorn squish. So stay tuned for that if you wanna be notified. I'm also, I finally have everything together for my giveaway that I've been talking about for the last like month and a half now. So stay tuned for that. Stay crafty my friends and until next time guys, bye.